water, the source of all life on Earth. Several videos in this series are going to discuss water. This one is going to focus on slowing, spreading, and sinking water, and maintaining it inside of the soil. Proper management of water ensures that it flows underneath the ground slowly, not on top of the ground quickly where it causes sheet erosion as well as gully erosion. Climate change discussion typically revolves around carbon dioxide, both preventing the emission of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, as well as soaking it up and storing it using trees. Now the natural cycle of carbon in the planet has things living, dying, decomposing and releasing CO2 to the air, where trees absorb it in photosynthesis. However, as humanity started plowing the earth and turning it over and volatizing CO2, as well as burning hydrocarbons, a vast majority of CO2 released into the air nowadays is not through natural processes, but through man-made processes. Photosynthesis. Plants turning carbon dioxide and water into sugars for soil life and oxygen. Of critical importance in this equation is the water because without the water, we do not convert the carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. So how do we ensure plants have the water they need? It's vitally important that we try to avoid water running straight downhill. When water runs downhill and has high amounts of energy, it picks up and carries soil with it and deposits it at the bottom of rivers, lakes, and oceans. Now, this is just as important for home gardeners as it is for climate change. Because in your home garden, the more water that you store and hold inside of your soils, the less evaporation you'll have. That means that you're watering less. Additionally, your trees, your veggies, your tomatoes, they all have more water to perform more photosynthesis. So the more photosynthesis they have, the more energy they have, the more energy they have, the uh, faster they will grow, the healthier they will grow, uh, the more pest resistant and disease resistant they'll become. So storing, holding water inside of your soil is vitally important, not just for climate change, but also just for growing tomatoes. If you look into your local rivers and trenches along the roadsides during a rainstorm, do you see brown water? If you see brown water, what you're looking at is topsoil erosion. You're looking at the most fertile substance on the planet being carried away and lost to the bottom of rivers and oceans. This is not how we should be doing our earthworks on this planet. However, most engineering done today is to do just that, to run the water as quickly downhill as possible into the lakes and rivers. And while required in cities to prevent flooding of streets, in farmland, we should be trying to slow spread and sink the water and absorb it by plants, which filter it and clean it. Two fantastic tools for doing this are terraces and swales. When the water flowing downhill hits a swale, it's held by the berm and soaks into the soils. In a future video in this series, we'll discuss how water soakage happens inside of soils the science behind it and how to maximize soakage and storing in your soils, as well as a cheat code. Let's get back to taking away the energy out of water. We just need to understand what gives water energy and what causes water to carry soil away, as well as how water flows in open bodies. Let's start from the back first. When water flows through a stream like this, the walls of the stream and the floors of the stream, through friction, try to hold the water back. This energy loss is proportional to the length of the stream. The longer the stream, the more frictional losses to the walls and the floor. And if the stream is deep enough, wide enough, and the flow is slow enough, 
most of the energy flow from the water is absorbed in the top layer of water flow only. Erosion is minimized and water is crystal clear. Water gains its energy from falling vertically down through a gravitational field. So when designing farmlands or even just your land, your goal is to spread water out and run it as far as possible along contour. We do that with a tool called swales. Swales are made by digging out a trench on perfect contour and using the dirt from that trench on a downhill burn where we plant our trees. In rain events, the water will accumulate in the trench and then slowly sink into the subsoils, recharging your aquifers. In a future video, we'll discuss how to maximize this soakage before the water gets down to the water table. But when you combine excellent earthworks, amazing water storage capacity in your soils through living soils and carbon sponges, you get tremendous fertility as well you get very low maintenance gardens that take care of themselves and will do so forever. Now if swales aren't your thing, you can just put gardens on contour. Additionally, you can look and try terraces. Terracing lands has been around forever and works for the exact same reasons as swales do, slowing the water. Important note for both swales and terraces is that they need to be designed so that in extreme weather events, that water is allowed to overflow through a controlled path. And finally, using riparian strips on the entrances to waterways allows the water to hit a strip of forest, get absorbed, have sediment settle down, get used by the trees, stored by their bodies, and held inside biological material before all that nutrient enters into our waterways where it pollutes the waters and also is a lost source of energy and fertility. Now remember, anything can be contoured, from a small garden plot or a large farm field. Using hedgerows on contour high up in the land will maximize water soakage to prevent the flooding of lower fields. So that's an in-depth look at slowing, spreading, and storing water in your soils. And remember that that is important for energy for your plants, maximize harvest of your tomatoes, it's important for farmers, it's important to reduce erosion in fields, to reduce the carryover of all your topsoil and fertility away from your land, to hold that, keep that on your property. It's also really important for photosynthesis, the energy for your plants, but also we don't do the whole carbon sequestration thing without water in our soils. Next episode, I'm going to talk about how to maintain that water once it's in your soils. So now we've done the earthworks, we've set it up, it's all working proper. How are we going to maximize both how much we hold in the soil and then also how much evaporates away from the soil? This is going to directly impact, especially if you're in arid climates, but even if you're not, it's going to impact how often you have to water your plants and it's going to happen. Uh, impact how happy your plants are overall. So I hope you enjoyed this slightly modified climate change video linking climate change to home gardeners to industrial production and all the things we do wrong but more importantly how we can do things right. Thanks for watching.